I'd like to talk to you about an experience that I had when I was living at the Bonfin, which is um, a spiritual center uh, where the master Omram Mikhail Ivanhoff gave lectures. And I was a permanent worker uh, there for uh, several years. And um, we, we, were, uh, we were about 40 people, if I rem remember rightly. And um, some of us worked in the gardens or in the uh, hothouses, in mechanics and, and different things. And we were about six uh, artisans. Uh, well, there's another word in English, uh, craftsmen, craftswomen, because we were all women. And um, I had set a workshop, a pottery workshop with another sister. And uh, after a year of producing things for brothers and sisters who came for the, uh, do you say congresses or conventions uh, in, during the summer. He was there for three months summer giving months. lectures uh, there and people came from all over the world. And uh, after a, about a year of work, we had a lot of things to sell. People uh, bought things at the, at the Bonfins Profit, of course, as we were all volunteers. Uh, the master, we heard, somebody told, <clears throat> told us that the master would come and see our workshop during uh, dinner when everybody would be in the, in the hall having dinner. So we waited for him having uh, cleaned the workshop as much as we could. And when he came, he had a look uh, all around uh, uh, and uh, he stopped uh, near, uh, in front of a wall on which we had uh, shelves with all the pottery uh, pieces that we had made that were finished uh, and uh, ready for sale and so on. And he said, <clears throat> he said, your shapes are all right. Uh, they are beautiful, but the colors, not. And uh, he said, no, this is not pretty. This color is not beautiful, that one either. So it was a shock for us. Because uh, I must explain here, we were working with stoneware, which is a kind of clay that has to be um, fired. Uh, it means cooked, but we say fire, uh, at very high temperatures. And um, because of that, we, we cannot have uh, bright colors. We, we get be beiges, grays, uh, uh, subdued greens and blues, dark blue, and so on. Uh, so uh, the master said, you must find pure colors. It's very important. Uh, and uh, when he was gone, we thought a lot about it because uh, we couldn't use, he had said, why don't, why don't you use the colors contained in the light, meaning the colors of prism that the prism gives us. Uh, and we, we thought a lot about it because, I mean, it was difficult to choose. We couldn't uh, use a, a bright red glaze on a, a, a big object. So we made some experiments, you know. We, we st first of all, we had to do quite a lot of technical work to find uh, those beautiful colors that the master wanted. Uh, because, I mean, we had to change the type of clay and choose, instead of stoneware, uh, choose earthenware, which is fired at lower temperatures, and then we, we can get beautiful colors. But we, we had to buy a, a new clay, type of clay, a new uh, a, a re a book of recipes. And we, for, for a few weeks, we had to make experiments to find beautiful and pure colors. We had to, it, does, it didn't exist just, uh, we couldn't buy those glazes. We had to make them. So um, it, it took a long time. And finally, we obtained very nice colors. And uh, we decided to use the bright colors like orange and, uh, and uh, red and yellow on, on f little vases, you know, with a, a, ve a very fine neck 
uh, you know, something delicate, uh, not uh, uh, huge pieces <laughs> in red or yellow. And I must say that people who were there on, for the summer retreats uh, loved our new colors. They were enchanted by them. We already had a reaction there. And when the master came uh, to see us again about six months later, he, he uh, congratulated us, he was happy about it, he said it's beautiful, very good, very good, very beautiful, and so on. And then he gave us a second challenge. Um, he said, people who come into your workshop should see only beauty, not dirt. So for us, it was really difficult because a pottery workshop is dirty. I mean, there's clay everywhere and, uh, you know, wet clay and dry, dried up clay and so on, and, and the glazes also. So he said, think about it and try to make your workshop very beautiful. He said, uh, dirt uh, is part of work, of course, but uh, as little as possible, so that, I mean, you, can, you should control it. So we, again, we uh, tried to uh, follow his uh, advice and we painted uh, two walls in daffodil yellow, a very beautiful golden yellow. And uh, we hid the pots and, not pots and pans, but pots and uh, brushes and so on behind uh, strips of, of plastic, yellow plastic too, so that it, we couldn't see them. And we, we, we bought a very beautiful blue, royal blue curtain to hide the place where we did the glazing, which was always very dirty too. So after doing that, we, it wasn't very costly, not at all. I mean, we did the work ourselves and we realized very quickly how good it was for us. We came into the workshop in the morning and we felt exhilarated with those colors and the beauty of the place. And we realized that it was, we were the first people to benefit from the master's advice. And people came and exclaimed also. And I do remember a little girl, she was about seven, I think, and she used to come, as long as her parents were there uh, for the summer retreat, she uh, came every morning and she stayed there silent. She stood in the entrance looking at the workshop, looking at us working, never saying a word. And we smiled at each other and she went away. So uh, that for us was really uh, extraordinary because we had heard the master talk about the influence of colors and we had read a lot of his uh, lectures about colors too but that was special I mean it was in our lives it was something that concerned us and he we had to make choices and so on and be more uh, uh, careful about what we were doing and we understood that what the color the, the influence of colors is much more it is much greater than we had ever thought uh, because we saw the effect uh, they had on us when we had them in the workshop um, all around us, beautiful and pure. And what he taught us was to seek uh, purity and beauty uh, in our homes, uh, in colors, of course, but in more than that, uh, in, in the whole uh, of our everyday life beauty and purity. I'd like to end this little talk um, with a quotation. Uh, I think it was in 858. He said, colors contain power. One day we're going to heal with colors. We're going to teach children with colors and we are going to travel in space with colors. <laughs>